What's up guys, this is Tampa Tech and this is a Sony XBR 55 inch TV that keeps on turning off. This TV was donated by a home theater customer. It goes for around $3,500 working and there's more than one listing. The cheapest was $3,200. It would run for maybe like 20 minutes and turn off, sometimes an hour and turn off. It's really random. If you're looking for a great place to buy TV boards, check out electropartsonline.com. Also check out shop jimmy.com they offer repair kits and tv boards i also checked out manualslib.com i'll leave a link for that in the video description below that's a great source and many manuals are free there but they didn't have this service manual for this particular model so i checked out servicemanuals.net and they did have it there but i had to purchase it for around 16 17 dollars i went ahead and purchased it what's nice about that website is that you can have a collection of service manuals. Once you sign in with a username and password, you check my downloads and they're all listed under my downloads. So you can have a collection of service manuals. I'm also gonna share a screenshot of a very important troubleshooting guide that should help you out if you have this same model. The standby light on front of the TV lets you know that you have standby voltage going to the main logic board, but it also lets you know if the TV's failing. So if the TV turns off and you get flashing red lights, that is the error code. And you need the service manual to find out what that error code is. I'm gonna share this paid information that I paid for, but I'm gonna share it to you guys for free. So give me a thumbs up for doing that. And here's the screenshot. Hopefully that screenshot can help you fix your TV. Now I'm gonna show you how to troubleshoot this TV with a simple voltmeter, but you can just order all the boards for this TV for under $200, which is still a pretty good deal considering this is a $3,500 TV. So you, you'll get this board, which is the LED driver board. This powers the backlight. And then you'll get the DPS board, which is connected to the TCOM board, which gives you the picture on the screen. And also the main board, which has all the HDMI inputs and controls the on off, channel up, channel down, all those features. Uh, you could just replace all these boards and it should get your TV up and running. You really just need to find out if you have good input voltage coming in. Now most TVs will just have a standard 120 volts power cord plugged into the back of the TV. Or um, in Europe, that'd be, I think it's 220 or 240 volts coming in. But right here, this particular TV has an AC adapter, which converts your 100 volts, if you're in the United States of America, or your 240 volts if you're in Europe and converts that to 24 volts DC coming out to the back of the TV. And it tells you that right here on the sticker, 24 volts DC output. So we just get a standard voltmeter, put it in DC volts and we read, read the center pin right here and the center pin should, you have to have a good ground source. A good ground source would be the chassis of the TV, which is like right here, or the corner screw right here. That should be a good ground source. So we got your 23.8 volts DC and it's steady voltage. Now, if it was bouncing up and down, then the AC adapter, there's something wrong with it. Probably bad capacitors or bad regulator in the AC adapter. So I would replace the AC adapter or replace those parts inside the AC adapter. All right, so we have good voltage, so we know the AC adapter is good. Now over here, let's check out the output voltage. All right, and once again, you wanna put your negative lead on a ground screw closest to where you're testing. And we're gonna check out the test point right here, 23 volts, 23.7, pretty close to 24 volts, it's good. And the next test point, 23.4, yeah, that's good. And then next one should be 3.3 a logic voltage, 3.26, pretty close to 3.3 DC volts. So 3.3 is, that's pretty close to that. I would say it's good. The main logic board and on the white wire, we got 3.4 and it's steady, it's good. So if you have no power, no standby light on the screen, on the front of the TV, no standby light, and you have all these voltages are good and this is good, and the voltage over here coming into the main logic board is good, 
but you have no power, no standby light on the TV, then I would change out the main logic board. If you have no picture, but you do have illumination, that means the LED driver board is powering the LED strips, giving you the illumination on the TV, the glow on the TV. So I would replace the TCOM board, which controls the picture. So if you have illumination, no picture, then most likely it's a bad TCOM board. Uh, if you have a black screen, a really black screen, no illumination whatsoever. It could be a bad LED board or LED driver board and or the um, LED strips behind here are bad. Now, right here, what I noticed, these parts right here were getting unusually hot, like 200 Fahrenheit hot, which is ridiculous. Uh, these parts usually work fine under 120 Fahrenheit. Once it hits 200, they start to malfunction. Some of the parts on the LED driver board were really unusually hot. So I decided to use my thermal camera while overlooking all the boards. I noticed that the TV turned off and I was getting the red flashing light of death. Now I did take some pictures of the ICs that were really overheating. And so I decided to use thermal pads to conduct some of that heat away from the components to the heat shield. So here's some close-ups of those ICs that are overheating. And if the temperature reaches over 200 Fahrenheit, it can cause the TV to shut down. There is a temperature setting in the TV that causes the TV to shut down as a safety precaution. Interested in the thermal camera? Check out the link below. What you do is replace the board or replace the parts or try this. This is the first thing I would try is thermal pads. Now this is a heat shield right here. And this heat shield is recessed right here and here. And what that does is press up against these parts. But if you don't have good thermal conductivity, then it's not gonna absorb the heat away from the components to the heat shield. And then this part will overheat and fail and the TV will fail. So I have these thermal pads. You can get these for under $10. And then what you want to do is clean off all these parts with electronic spray and wipe them down clean. And then just place these thermal pads just like this. You can use one millimeter thermal pads or two. And that should help fix the TV. Now, if this does not work, then you waited too long. And the parts eventually went bad, just cooked inside and out. And I also put it on these ICs just in case. You don't really have to, but I just did it because, hey, you never know. All right, but make sure the parts are not dusty because these, these will not stick if your parts are dirty. They have to be cleaned with electronic spray, 99% alcohol. So I think it's 99.9% .9 alcohol. There we go. Let me put one on here. Going a little thermal pad happy. And I'm just gonna put one here. This is two millimeter thermal pads right here on this one. And this one. Now, you wanna know what the voltage is on the IC. They are reading 23.5 DC volts and this is going to be 23.5 same just like that
216. TV still working great. Had the TV running all night and adjusted and calibrated the picture settings. So the picture looks even better than it was before. So that overheating issue looks like so far has been eliminated, forcing the TV to shut off. If you know anyone that has a Sony XBR TV, they may find this video useful or helpful. Go ahead and click on the share button below and share this video to them, help someone out. Subscribe and hit that bell notification to stay updated on the latest tech videos.